Marvel Rivals was officially revealed this week and with some detective work and help from friends, this is what we know about every hero ability in the game. 18 heroes have been revealed and at least 12 of those heroes will be available in the May playtest. The three classes within the game are categorized as DPS, tank and support and in this video we're going to be talking about each class individually and all the heroes within them so let's get started the characters in the dps class are spider-man iron man magic black panther storm the punisher namor star lord and scarlet witch Spider-Man is a DPS hero with 300 health and his primary attack is melee, so he actually has unlimited ammo, but that's just the surface of the hero. If we take a look at his abilities, pushing left shift will give him the ability to web swing across the map. This is going to be a great mobility option. As we can see here, it has three uses, but these uses will recharge. Spider-Man's secondary fire is a web blast that we can see here in the middle of the screen. It has five uses that will recharge over time i would assume that these webs won't stun the enemy they'll just do a small amount of damage when you land the attack the next ability he has is an uppercut that will help you chain your melee attacks together the only footage we have is this shot from the trailer but if you land this attack it's going to be the perfect opportunity to get a lot of damage in to start the fight off right spider-man's ultimate is an aoe attack that will temporarily stun and web enemies in place if you do manage to get most of the team in this ultimate, it will be the perfect opportunity to get a squad wipe. The last ability from Spider-Man is his E ability. If I had to take an educated guess what this was, I would assume it's just like a miniature scale of his ultimate. If you manage to shoot an enemy with this web blast, I would think that it's going to stun them and web them in place temporarily, kind of like a McCree or Cassidy grenade from Overwatch. Iron Man is a DPS hero with 250 health. And as you can see here, he has a primary and secondary attack. His primary attack shoots repulsor blasts out of his hands, and his secondary ability is a unibeam blast with 100 ammo. The uniblast seems powerful, but it leaves you extremely vulnerable, so using it like they are here in this video is probably not recommended. Iron Man has three more abilities and an ultimate. The first is a movement ability, where he can glide and quickly fly around the map. You can use this to quickly escape combat or to re-enter. The second ability is a power-up ability. By switching stances for a short time, Iron Man's damage is going to increase temporarily. Visually, you can see he has more body equipment like straight out of Iron Man. And you can see his hands also change into super cannons. When switching stances and powering up, you can see on screen that he goes from 100 ammo to unlimited. So when you see a powered up Iron Man, it's probably the smart decision just to hold cover and wait for him to power down before re-engaging the fight. The last ability is an AoE blast that you can shoot at your opponents that deals a small amount of damage. Abilities have cooldowns like every character in the game. Before we talk about Iron Man's ultimate, I do have to mention that we see Iron Man flying around, and I'm assuming that's just his passive. Holding the jump button can make you fly or glide. I'm not really sure how it works, but holding the jump button generally is how these things work in video games. And lastly, we have Iron Man's ultimate, an overcharged missile attack with deadly power. If you combo this with Spider-Man's ability to stun enemies, you can very easily get an entire team wipe. Magic is a DPS hero with 250 health. Magic is a melee fighter that swings a gigantic sword around with infinite swings. The unique mechanic that Magic has is that the more damage she deals, the more shields she's going to get temporarily. So in the right scenarios, I could see her 1v3ing, 1v4ing the enemy team and getting some crazy clips to post online. Magic has two main abilities and an ultimate. The first ability is a dash uppercut. This is going to help you clear the distance and start the initial combat damage that you're going to need. Also, it looks like it's stunning your opponent when you land, which is the perfect opportunity to get in those early strikes before you teleport away. Her second ability is a portal phase that lets you open a portal, become invisible, and reposition. I'm assuming she becomes invulnerable during this stage, but there's no confirmation on this yet. 
This ability will be useful during the fight and only increases her potential to 1v3, 1v4 the enemy team. If you manage to get some early damage, reposition, get more damage, reposition again, get more damage, you ultimate, you're constantly gaining shield as you're doing damage. She is going to be a powerhouse in the right hands. Lastly, her ultimate sends her into this demon-like state where it increases her attack and AoE radius. She is going to be a monster. Black Panther, I know a fan favorite for a lot of people, is our next DPS hero in the game. But a small disclaimer before we start talking about him. The only footage we have from Black Panther is from Loki's perspective. Loki is able to transform into other heroes in the game, so take everything minor with a grain of salt. Black Panther has two attacks. The primary attack is a melee attack with unlimited uses, and the secondary attack is a projectile that he can use twice with cooldowns that will recharge. Moving on to his abilities, we see Black Panther has three abilities and an ultimate. His first ability is a dash attack that seems very fast and does a small amount of damage to anyone he charges through. I would say this is comparable to a Genji dash from Overwatch. His second ability is a Cyclone Kick that does a moderate amount of damage. The Cyclone Kick is the initial spin up and then he dashes forward. So between the two abilities, Black Panther has two dashes, a quick dash and then he has a Cyclone Kick dash. So for any of the projectile ranged heroes in the game, it might actually be hard to land your hits on Black Panther. The last ability we see here is a spacebar ability. We don't see it used, but I'm assuming this is some sort of jump or leap for mobility. Lastly, Black Panther's ultimate transforms them into the Panther God for a huge AoE blast. The radius for this ultimate is pretty large, so I'm assuming it's not going to be the most powerful ultimates. So you want to make sure you're getting more than one or two people when you trigger the ultimate. Before we move on to the next hero, we do see Black Panther glowing purple a few times in the trailer. Uh, this could potentially be a possible buff where he gets more damage the lower he is on health, but once again, no confirmation on this, just speculation at this point. Namor is a ranged DPS fighter with 250 health. Namor's primary attack is him throwing his tridents into the enemies. You can do this infinitely as he magically summons another trident to keep throwing. Namor has two attack speeds, he has a fast throw, and he has a charge attack on a cooldown. Charge attacks are obviously going to be more powerful, but because of the cooldown, you're not going to be able to spam the charge attacks over and over and over. Namor has an ability to summon multiple octopus turrets to fight for him. This is... <laughs> I laughed so hard when I saw this in the trailer, but I think it's pretty funny. Being able to set up defense turrets to help you hold a position or to stop the enemy from advancing is a very cool ability. It reminds me of Torb from Overwatch, where if you put your turret in the right spot, it's going to really hurt the enemy team. When it comes to Namor's ultimate ability, we don't see it in the trailer, so we have no confirmation what that's going to be at the moment. We do have four more DPS heroes. We have Punisher, Storm, Scarlet Witch, and Star-Lord. A lot of these weren't shown in the trailer, so we're moving into more we don't really know quite yet about these heroes. In this promotional artwork, we do see Storm and Scarlet Witch both flying in the air, so we're assuming they have some sort of flight ability like Iron Man. Scarlet Witch looks to be throwing some sort of magical orb like she does in the movies. Also, Storm looks like to be shooting lightning bolts. The Punisher in this promotional artwork is seen to have a deployable turret he can use, but unlike Namor's, it looks like it's manually operated. This potentially could be his ultimate, and if I had to draw a comparison to another game, I would say it's like Rampart from Apex Legends, where you set up your turret and you mow down the enemy. And lastly, we have Star-Lord, who is the most mysterious character from the entire roster. The only info we have on Star-Lord is this quick moment from the trailer. And that is it for the entire DPS category. Next, we will be talking about the tank class and then the support class to end out the video. But before we go any farther, if you are enjoying the video, if you are learning information about the game, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to follow for future updates on Marvel Rivals. All right, moving on. The characters in the tank class are Bruce Banner, the Hulk, Penny Parker, Doctor Strange, Groot, and Magneto. To start off the tank category, we have Bruce Banner, aka the Hulk. This is by far the most unique character in the entire game, because it's actually two characters in one. While in the Bruce Banner form, we have 200 health, 
a pistol with 25 ammo and some sort of a grenade ability. I'm assuming this form is going to be pretty weak in comparison to the Hulk, of course, but you should definitely still be able to get kills in the right scenarios. When you ult as Bruce Banner, you rage out and transform into the Hulk, and this is where the fun begins. The Hulk is a tank with 900 health, and his primary fire is throwing hands, so you have unlimited ammo. The Hulk does have a leap ability where he can jump through the air, but it doesn't look to me like he's actually doing damage with this ability. It's kind of misleading in the trailer, but as you can see, Namor is falling to the ground as the Hulk is jumping, and then when the Hulk lands, he starts punching Namor. Moving on to his abilities, he does have a secondary attack, which is him clapping his hands together. Normally in the movies or the comics, this is a range attack, but in the game, we only see it up close against the wall, so it's uncertain about the range of this ability, but it looks like a powerful attack regardless. The next two abilities weren't shown in the trailer, so they still have a bit of mysterious to them, but with the Hulk being a tank, it would make sense that the shield looking ability would be some sort of defense attack or something like that to protect the team. Moving on to Hulk's ultimate though, this is straight out of the Avengers movie. Enough! You are all of you beneath me. I am a god, you dull creature. And I will not be bullied by that. This is a single target ult and it is going to be super powerful if you catch a DPS hero out of cover. I doubt it'll be good against the tanks because they're going to be so tanky, but if say Spider-Man web slings too close to you or Black Panther dashes too close to you, you're going to be able to grab them and you're going to be able to smack them around. The last thing we have to talk about with the Hulk is team up abilities. Team up abilities are like combo attacks that happen between certain characters on the team. The Hulk has a team up ability with Iron Man that makes him supercharged. Iron Man actually turns green after being amplified by the Hulk. It hasn't been confirmed if team up abilities are going to work with anybody on your team or only certain people, so for now, I'm only assuming team ups work between certain characters in the game. But if we take a closer look to the Hulk, his C ability is his team up ability. And if you look at Iron Man, it's the same. So after your team up is successful, it's going to be pretty obvious on what button you need to press to take advantage of the power up. Penny Parker is a tank in a robotic suit of armor, but unlike the Hulk or say like a diva counterpart, it doesn't look like she actually has a secondary form outside of her suit. The only third person footage of Penny Parker that we have is in her ult, and as we can see here, she has 950 health, but the ultimates in the game actually increase player health, so I'm assuming her health is going to be like 600, 700, 800 range, pushing at max, probably like 600 to 700 range. In her ult, she charges forward for 12 seconds and knocks enemies back with her robotic spider arms. And if you look closely, you can see she actually leaves behind some sort of spider mind. And I think these can also be manually fired because as we can see here, she has a seven next to her primary attack, meaning that she has seven potential minds that she can fire. And I think this is a cool ability for a tank and will definitely stop people from pushing forward or for capturing the point that you're holding. Penny Parker also has a passive wall climb that allows her to vertically climb buildings and walls. This makes me think she's more of a flank tank or a dive tank and building a team around her will definitely work in your favor. That was all that was shown from Penny and I'm excited to see more of her in the playtest in May. Doctor Strange is a tank in Marvel Rivals and we get to see a few of his abilities in the trailer. Doctor Strange has a magical shield he can summon to protect his team, similar to what we see in the movies. When his shield's active, he can move, so it kind of makes me think like a Orion Heart from Overwatch. Next, we see him use a portal to teleport his team to the objective, but we never see how he uses it. Does he have to set up two points to connect them, or does the portal just take you to the objective? Of course, the second would be a lot more powerful than the first, but we'll have to wait to find more about this ability. But regardless, being able to teleport your team around the map is a huge advantage for any team to have. When Doctor Strange ults, we see him outputting a massive AoE that appears to be stunning the enemy. We can see the souls of enemies temporarily leaving their body. And if you pair this with like an Iron Man ult or a Black Panther ult, you should be able to get some sort of team wipe or at least wipe three or four of them. 
Looking at the HUD during Doctor Strange ult, we actually have a closer look at his abilities. We see that he has a ranged weapon with 6 shots. We also learn that his shield has 800 health, which is pretty substantial, and his player health is 600 in total. Looking at his abilities going left to right, we can see he has a shield that he can use. He also has some sort of movement ability with an up arrow that kind of resembles his cape. So maybe this is a dash or a flight ability. We're not really sure, but a lot of the shift abilities in the game are movement abilities. He does have an E ability that is a mystery to us, and then he also has a 91 second cooldown. The 91 second cooldown is of course for his portals. Having portals on a really low cooldown would be broken, so... Uh, this is probably like 75 seconds, maybe it's like 90 second cooldown for your portals. I think that's probably pretty reasonable. Groot is a tank and we only see him for a few moments in the trailer. He does have a ranged melee attack where his limbs grow longer to attack the enemies like in the movies. We also see him use his ultimate. This ultimate pulls in enemies to one spot and this reminds me of a Zarya ult from Overwatch. Besides that, we don't know anything else about Groot yet, but he looks pretty tanky and I'm excited to play this character. Magneto is the most mysterious tank in the game, and I don't think he's going to be in the May playtest. The only info we have about Magneto at this point is from this promotional artwork where he has this huge shield that he can deploy. And with that, we've come to the end of the characters in the tank class. There are only 5 tanks in the game at this point, and that's to be expected. The tank and the support roles always have less characters than the DPS role. But as time moves on, there will be more tanks, there will be more supports added to the game. And at long last, we've come to the final class in the game, the support class, and the characters in the support class are Rocket Raccoon, Mantis, Loki, and Luna Snow. Rocket Raccoon is the first support hero and he looks like so much fun. We start by seeing two passives, yes two. Not only can he wall climb, but he also has a jetpack. Talk about mobility. Damn! Like the Hulk, he also has a team up ability. Rocket can jump onto the back of Groot and this will increase the range that Groot has. This also picks up Rocket off of the ground, so it's easier for him to shoot the enemy. Taking a closer look at Rocket, we can see he has 45 ammo in his primary attack, which is an assault rifle. Plus, he has a secondary ability that looks like a healing item, which would make sense because he is a support hero. Rocket also has two abilities and an ultimate. Shift abilities, like I said before, are generally movement abilities, so this could be a jetpack blast, or it could just be the jetpack to get around. But when it comes to his ults, we're kind of still in the dark, but with Rocket tinkering with things, this kind of looks like a grenade that he can throw. Loki is a master of deception and the ultimate support hero. We can see him use an ability to make a decoy to fool the enemy, but he also has the ability to switch places with the decoy. I could see this being really useful to bamboozle the enemy, and you can have some nasty flanks. The enemy team could be like, oh, that's just a decoy, don't worry about it, and then BAM! Loki switches places and he's in your face. Loki and Loki's clone both have 250 health. Loki is a ranged fighter and his staff has an ammo capacity of 10. Looking at Loki's abilities, the cooldown for both the clone and the teleport seem pretty reasonable. We also have a shift ability with a plus sign. I know I said shift abilities are normally movement abilities, but his teleport isn't shift, so it actually makes me think that this is some sort of healing ability because there is a plus sign in the icon. But the true fun from Loki comes from his ultimate. Loki can transform into an enemy with all of their abilities. Yes, all of their abilities. As we see here, Loki is still on cooldowns from using his abilities, but when he uses his ultimate, all of the abilities reset and we get an ultimate. So the perfect way to use Loki is use your abilities, then transform into somebody else and use all of your abilities again. I'm really excited to see what people do with this character. Next up, we have Luna Snow, who is a support character with crazy ice powers. She can move around the map like Frozo from The Incredibles. She has 250 health, and she has 30 icicles that she can shoot at the enemy team. She does have a team-up ability that we see her use with Namor. We can see this team-up ability is labeled as C, and it has a snowflake icon. 
when we change to Namor, we can see the same snowflake icon here. And when Namor summons one of his octopus turrets, it's actually going to be imbued with ice magic. There is a few more abilities here we are unsure of, but we do see her ult in action and it looks crazy. And at first glance, you may think this is a freezing ability, but it actually looks like some sort of healing ability. There is a plus sign here that indicates healing. Plus, it also is pulsating like music to me, so think like Lucio from Overwatch. We are pumping up the music and healing our team, and I'm okay with that. While looking at her ult, we see this icon in the bottom right, which matches one of her abilities. I think this is like a healing effect that bestows a healing factor to one of your teammates where it's going to heal them over time. That would be my best guess. And lastly, we have Mantis, who is the most mysterious support legend in the game, as we only have one thing about her, and it's from this artwork that we have here. It looks like she has some sort of healing ability. She is behind Magneto's shield, but with her being a support legend, I would assume she has some sort of healing ability. And with that, we've gone through all 18 characters that have been revealed for Marvel Rivals. It has been so much fun going over these characters and theorizing and trying to figure out what this is. I am so freaking excited for this game. So if you want future updates for the game, major updates, interviews, anything obscure, I will be posting everything. So make sure to follow, and until next time, my name is Captain Kerr. It has been an honor having you here hanging out with me today, and I hope to see you again soon.